In this video, I am interviewing someone I have looked up to for a long time. His name is Alex Shiba and he is the co-founder of Uniform. Uniform is a startup that works in the enterprise spheres where they actually inject um, stuff that is normally not really ready or used in enterprise because the systems used for enterprise are a little bit behind. So they're doing the Jamstack, they're enriching the digital experience platform with all these kind of cool headless approaches. And we have personalization, we can use Nuxt and all of the stuff. And Uniform is kind of making sure that this, this is standardized and it works at scale. And you know, I do this on a daily basis. I struggle with these systems and how to get it to be modern. And they did a startup and they actually made it happen. So it's now something I can use every day. And you know what? That makes me super excited. So in this interview, we talk about how did he start Uniform? Um, why did he want to start it? Why did he leave his really comfy job at a super cool CMS vendor? But also he will show us some of the software itself. This is what I'm really excited about. And you should be too, because this is going to change the game for big e-commerce and for big CMSs. So without further ado, this is the interview with Alex Shiba. This is post-processing Tim. And Tim, I have a pro tip for you when you interview someone. Press the freaking record button. Why didn't you press the record button? That's like the main thing you do when you make a video. Anyways, um, you'll be seeing me looking that way. Uh, when I ask questions, because that's the reference cam I have for Alex. And so it's it's kind of off and my video feed is not as nice, but it's good enough. So enjoy the interview while I sit in a corner and cry and think about my mistakes. Hello, Alex. How are you? Welcome to the channel. What a privilege to have you. Hey, Tim. All good. Good. Really nice to be here. So cool. I've actually wanted to interview you for probably a year because you've been helping us out at work with a lot of stuff that for us was like super hard to do. And you were like, oh, it's like this, just do that. And you were like, the black magic, you know it all. So it's super cool that you have you here. And what I actually ask every guest is, can you say your name the way it's supposed to be said? And then maybe tell us where you're from, stuff like that. Uh, happy to, happy to. Sure. So, uh, my name is Alex Shiba. Uh, some some pronounce it as Shiba, ah. which is kind of funny because in 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 Russian this means uh, hockey puck. So that's that's <laughs> kind of. So when I get that, I I, I crack up. So yeah. Uh, and are you like Alexander or Sasha, or are you actually an Alex? I'm actually Alexander, a, a ah. Ukrainian. Exactly. Ukrainians spell O every time uh, they see an A just to piss off Russians. So that's how, that's how it works. <laughs> and you know what? This is why I, I ask this question every time, <laughs> because I get this kind of stuff. <laughs> this is perfect. And also, I love we work with uh, people from Ukraine a lot. So you, you just clicked right in and spoke with them on their level, which really worked. So that was cool. Yeah. They're from the same hometown as me, which which also helps. Really? Yeah, that definitely country. helps. It, because it's exactly, it's a huge country. So, but now you're in the US, right? Yeah, I've been here since 2006. So based on average uh, kind of stay of in San Francisco, I'm, I'm, I'm local practically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're basically um, local to the place if you're there for that long. And I can imagine that a lot of people are there, like if you're there for four years, you kind of become local because so many people are there from so many different places. You have to, right? Yeah, it's it's sort of became in recent few years a very transient city, uh, which I, I I cannot recall that in late 2000s. So it's, things started shifting quite quite fast with yeah. with all the all the growth here that the region experienced in tech, it definitely affected sort of the city mindset and attracting different sort of folks that are here to come and may not necessarily want to stay. Um, ah, yeah, I can imagine. Because you are there because, well, you started it differently, but now you work at Uniform, which you co-founded, right? So would you mind explaining to our guests, you know what, 
probably a lot already know Uniform because when we tweet about this, people will really like to see it. But can you still explain what Uniform is? And then maybe after that, like, why did you think you had to start this startup? What what was there in the um, in the market that make you feel like, oh, there's an idea. Let's do this. Yeah, that's a good question. Well, uh, our mission is to uh, bring Jamstack to enterprise scenarios, enterprise customers. We we've been fans of Jamstack for quite some time, and um, what we realize is that there is these technological bubbles that uh, did not necessarily intersect, and Jamstack has a lot of benefits um, that that would be I mean, critical, uh, super useful and and real painkillers to enterprise users. This is where I'm coming from, right? Uh, working with Sycor for 13 years, I've been exposed to quite quite a lot of enterprise scenarios and the pains that uh, enterprise customers experiencing are pretty much what Jamstack is, is all about. So it, it became clear that the intersection, sort of creating the Venn diagram out of these two bubbles is needed. And um, we've done a couple months of consulting after uh, f- 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 starting the company. Um, and it, it became clear that these are the real problems that we need we need to start addressing. And there needs to be sort of a conduit system and maybe a middleware, so to speak, something that connects the existing world of enterprise uh, CMSs and digital experience platforms and uh, more modern decoupled uh, CDN driven approach with with modern JavaScript uh, static side generators and pretty much connecting these big dots. This this is obviously it was obvious to us this was needed and that we have the right recipe to do it because we know the the world of enterprise digital experience platforms really well and passionate about Jamstack. And uh, so sort of became natural to us that this is something we need to do and solve. What I like about this is that basically you just described my everyday job, but I just answered with frustration, right? So I work on these huge platforms or e-commerce or CMS or whatever it is. And we put in place like, all these things to make that front end actually modern performance, all of those things we want as front enders, right? But then it's really hard to do so. Mm -hmm. But the fact maybe that you guys are in San Francisco, you're like, but we can also just do a startup to solve it rather than the European approach that I have, like just complain and try to work it in. And (laughs) it's actually kind of cool that you now, when this thing launches like big, you're solving everyday problems of so many front end developers. I think that's super cool. I think that's, it was needed. It was time for this. Yeah, thank you. That's that, that that's really music to our ears. <laughs> and uh, the the trick with enterprises that, that we realize is that they cannot necessarily afford a big transition to like the usual suspects of Jamstack stack. <laughs> um, so they, they, Politically invested into these uh, marketing platforms, they technologically invested, and that's usually five, seven, maybe more um, year investment, and sort of just turning off and and move completely different direction and may not be feasible. And even if you do, um, your marketing folks may sort of miss out on some of the capabilities of of this integrated marketing systems. They are monolithic. They've they're vast, but they have quite quite a rich feature set and they were appealing to business users marketers for for past decade right so this is what those users expect so sort of we identified two two problems is kind of bringing which manifested in this bi-directional strategy that we have is to bring these capabilities such as personalization um, into the world of Jamstack. And, and that's that's largely a missing piece now, but also make these uh, systems, uh, enterprise digital experience platforms like Sycor compatible with the world of Jamstack. So sort of 
bring everything together from two different directions or dig and tunnel from two different sides. Exactly. <laughs> I, I was thinking, like, if we go to a Jamstack website now, let's take my website, I wouldn't know how to start to do the personalization that you're about to show off a bit later. Right? I wouldn't know how to do it. So you're also enhancing the Jamstack world next to enhancing the enterprise world. So there's actually this whole extra thing. And so why do you think those traditional systems are no longer successful um, in this whole world? Because I know... I have not seen it work properly. So do you know what is the difference yep. here? Why are you so successful and they are not, even though they've been here for years and years? I think the there's there's a few things happening. The goalpost has shifted in terms of uh, what a performant web page is and what the users, your visitors expect a fast site to be like, right? So, so they're sort of spoiled by blazing fast experiencing coming up from uh, from Google, from startups that that have the luxury of greenfield. Uh, project execution using the latest technology and really optimizing towards end user experience and 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 deliver sub second page page loads. Enterprises they they've they've been lagging. So I think there is this expectation gap between what the users uh, want from your uh, brand to deliver and and reality often and tooling. Uh, it's people process technology right. Uh, all, all three really factoring in. So uh, more, I would say, tooling and processes, and people would usually would catch up and 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 learn and adopt new new stuff if the tooling and processes is, is in place. So tooling sort of been la lagging behind because the front end, uh, the JavaScript revolution, right, in the open source. Um, really push the envelope of what you can do with, with JavaScript. And like, if you would be building a website now using some sort of .NET based uh, server side uh, HTML baking technology is probably not something you would not consider, right? So we no, 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 sort of figuring that j yeah. <laughs> JavaScript is is the way to go. But yeah, um, the, the role of CMS, this also means that the role of CMS is changing and it's it has no business of managing presentation layer and sort of impacting how you want to go about building your front end right um so full freedom of expression on the front end sort of created a need to reduce C content management to the essentials and what are those essentials is providing content um and providing business users with ability to assemble experiences from uh, modern front-end components, I guess, um, and all the marketing la layers on, on, on top of that, that's sort of TBD, uh, where is that responsibility? I think philosophically, it we're sort of arriving to Linux-based philosophy winning over Win uh, Windows-based philosophy where you get software in one package, you have everything you need uh, in there, but in terms of kind of best of breed, it's really not not there because you kind of you have you have a big monolithic piece of software, and it's just harder to uh, making sure every single capability is the best that you can ever have. While with Linux-based philosophy, it's more like an assembly of best of breed. Uh, technologies and that mindset is winning in in content in enterprise content management digital experience well, platform probably everywhere but do you think maybe uniform is kind of the glue between those best of breeds because this is i'm trying to define it for myself also because you do a whole bunch with like making it jamstack but uniform itself doesn't do a jamstack thing right or does it i'm I might know this actually already, but I'm asking this because probably some viewers will not really know like how that connects because you're also doing the personalization thing, but it's kind of a layer in between to make it work, right? Is that a yep. correct assumption? Uh, yeah, so philosophically, we are very much aligned to the best of breed and being the nervous system of your digital experience solution, which 
includes a content management system, maybe a digital asset management system, maybe a combination of both some sort of content provider aspect, uh, marketing layer that that orchestrates you know what what piece of content particular visitor should see uh, at this right moment um, so, and and everything in in between. So that's definitely what what we're building um, is the enabling technology to to get there, sort of uh, uh, conceptually Zapier for DXP or MuleSoft for, for DXP space, something something in between those those lines. But the, the challenge is before we get there, because that's, that's quite a journey, the challenge here is how do you address the current pain points of these companies that already bought in with, uh, with monolithic DXPs and how do you incrementally uh, uh, decouple the, the front ends and move them towards Jamstack so they can clearly see the path forward and it doesn't have to be another six month or a year replatforming, expensive replatforming uh, yeah, effort. I guess I've seen you guys change things around in like four weeks and everybody around me, they're like, what? Uh, okay, this is possible, <laughs> right? And this is nice about... If you are a bit smaller company with a whole bunch of smart people, you can go really fast. And this is super cool. So, you know what? How about we just show it? Would you mind maybe just um, showing a little demo so people can see like the uniform interface and how it all works? Absolutely. Would love to. Yeah, I, I guess you do. <laughs> you know what? I'm also <laughs> quite keen to see it because I've seen some demos, but I feel like yours now might be slightly scoped differently. So... Yeah, let's let's uh, let's do it. The uh, the process starts with onboarding experience, where we guide users through these three different steps of uh, setting up your site, offering you to deploy from a starter kit that also comes with a, a preset content setup, and pick your stack. So Contentful, Netlify, Next.js could be your stack. Next step, we would connect with Contentful. Uh, this would actually provision a brand new contentful space. It will install our app and it will install the content from starter kit. It's completely optional, but this sort of would fast tracks the whole process yeah, cool. uh, towards going to personalization, right? Um, so in the content model, you see everything comes from, from our starter kit, including page models, and we'll see the site in a second. So in this page models, we model components as, as a reference uh, to multiple variances. So here you can see Uniform is actually a plugin that extends Contentful's um, UI. We'll connect the site to kind of entering traditional Jamstack flow, right? We, we have a starter kit. We put the site name, like your repo credentials. We'll push a repo to your GitHub connect with Netlify in this case, and it will start deploying the site. Um, so this, this is sort of the Jamstack journey will involve fetching content from Contentful um, and um, also content from Uniform, uh, which we'll, we'll see in a second. So the uh, webhook here will do a handshake between, uh, between Uniform and um, in Netlify, so we'll need to make sure we set up that webhook. So every time we do a change of personalization configuration, we'll trigger Netlify webhook. So here we're talking about different intents that we configure for personalization. So we have call for papers, campaign registration developer marketer. This is a fictitious conference site. So let's say we have a campaign with UTM query string, uh, UNFRM conf, which identifies as potential speakers. So that's a campaign we can push out and you can see we can start personalizing it personalized straight up on, on the site um, as fast as possible without any backend calls. Same thing we can do with a cookie. Let's say we drop a cookie when we register on the site, we go back to home, we can see our homepage here is changing to thank you for joining because of that cookie has been set. So that's configuration uh, as a part of this intent configuration we have set up as a part of the starter and more interesting behavior. So we can actually use the tracker part of uh, Uniform to uh, identify your behavioral profile, in this case, developer, uh, go visit the developer page, go back, 
you can see here in both of the list of talks is personalized based on who I am. I go to marketer, refresh marketer page one more time. Now the marketing, I'm scored more marketer than developer. So I'm seeing marketing talks and marketing hero. So it doesn't it only do cookie based query string, but also rich behavioral based personalization. Um, if I want to create a brand new one, this let's say would be for visitors coming from your channel. Yeah, I'm going to be um, doing this later. Right? You know this, right? <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a query string based, keep it simple. Um, so source equals Tim, Tim's channel. Um, we'll be able to use that within Contentful when we provision brand new variants for our hero. So because it's very Jamstack uh, friendly approach, we publish and at that point, all the configuration of your personalization becomes a static file that will be embedded within your app during the Netlify build process. So we publish that part, that, that is the configuration. Now we need content. So provision brand new uh, hero for uh, our uh, variants. And here you can see we'll tag it with this intent that we just created. So that's the first class app extension to content for allowing marketers cool. to keep content with personalization in one It's place. all inside the one place, I love it. Exactly. Yeah, Contentful's app model is uh, is sublime. I mean, we definitely had a lot of fun building this. Um, so in, once uh, here I'm fast tracking the build process. Yeah, you can sure. see now hitting source Tim, and we have we have a personalized. There we go. Here. So we we're going from. Um, and, and, and this part shows how we can do it actually doing SSR on Vercel. So same developer behavioral match. And here we disable JavaScript and reload the page and we'll see the same personalized page. So there's multiple flavors of the execution part of this personalization. Uh, we can handle it to the client side if the CDN is not running logic or we can run it on CDN level. Uh, we support also various flavors of that, running JavaScript at CDN level with something like Cloudflare or Cell, but also on Akamai, we run um, sort of in embedded markup mode as, um, as another flavor. So, so you have like Cloudflare multiple... workers to kind of do um, API kind of calls to do a server-side render. That, that's what that does, right? Yeah, so it's leveraging okay. Next.js ser serverless target to oh, yes, do of course. load rendering too. Yeah. I'm a bit more in the view like... world and I cannot wait because they're 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 very close to doing that as well. So that's gonna be very cool. So you leverage all of those cool features from the, the providers that most people use anyways for their gem stack. Right. And I am so um impressed by how easy that was that you just did but also that it seems like on hydration, it knows what to show. And that's a little bit of the magic that I'm, I'll, I'm just going to have to dive into some codes at one point to understand that. But that is super nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, this the, is what we want to see, right? The team has done a great job um, getting this out. So we'll, we'll be announcing it really uh, soon and getting it out into the market. So excited to tell the story of, like personalization in a few minutes, right? So if we contrast this with the current status quo, uh, with, in Jamstack world, personalization is somewhat of a kind of a I haven't seen it, to gray be honest. Area. Not yeah. really. <laughs> and I also, I have seen a lot of demos from... and a lot of content editing and nothing happens because it's just too hard to set up. It's too slow. And this is really um, a lifesaver for real marketeers that actually want to be doing this. You're opening up a whole avenue also for agencies to consult on, right? It's super cool. Yeah, we, we believe that it's technology aspect is a, a big adoption blocker for personalization, kind of bringing personalization into mainstream, but also process like sometimes Users really don't know where to start. They, you know, talk about personalization, uh, but not really don't know, you know, how how where to start. Um, so, we our approach in that is not just building 
the tooling, but also building the process so it's very easy get started to get started and you, you can kind of incrementally upgrade your personalization game um, into it lars um, our co-founder he's been spearheading that whole initiative more around business enablement in his psychor days so he's very he has a board game about personalization so wow. yeah, <laughs> you know, the, the, there'll be lots of cool stuff coming out around more like how do you actually interface with with the system? I think we can make it make it mu much more fun, uh, but also on the IT side, like being able to not worry about infrastructure and scale. Because in this case, this is completely backhand less way of executing. Exactly, it, this right? is amazing. We're gonna need this. So, looking at this whole story, but also where you came from, you know, your your career as sidecore doing cool stuff already doing a bit of consulting, now this. If you look forward, what would you like your, kind of, if you look at this field that we are in, what would your legacy be? What would you love your legacy to be? <laughs> yeah, to, to, to be honest, thinking about legacy may, may, may be a bit too, too early, um, but I always wanted to, you know, build build a business and uh, build business with people I really enjoy working with and I really like and have a ton of fun doing that. Sort of figuring out this uh, this recipe uh, for myself and being able to to build something bigger, right? Than than a team. I, I led a, a team at Psychorp. It was a lot of fun as well. This is sort of a next challenge building building a business right and building a piece of software that becomes a company so as they say idea is not a product product exactly. is not a company right so true. kind of Very how true. do you get through the whole uh, cycle I, and it, that's that's the challenge that's something i want to have behind me and kind of know the recipe of how how to do it and Hopefully, if this works, do more of this and and then see where the next mission is. Exactly. I love it because you're kind of focusing on the process of just doing the stuff and doing it very well. And I guess if you do something very well and you are able to kind of market that also, things will just happen. And that's why probably Uniform is doing already so well. So congrats on that. I, if I did this, I would probably do it the same way. So that's a very Thanks nice so. ending like that. So Thank you. I wouldn't know if I have enough experience doing it myself, but you know, anyways, that's future talk. Um, listen, man, I really want to thank you for taking the time. I know it's pretty early on your side. Um, I also know you're an early riser, so I guess it's fine. But thank you nonetheless for your time. I know you're busy. So um, yeah, that's it. Cheers. No, Thank you. Cheers. All right, bye.